there is one thing we all can never deny being in a relationship with and that is money whether you're aware about it or not how you think about and handle money can significantly shape not just your love affairs and financial future but your entire future and that of your family as well In this video, we'll explore how faith can guide us in managing our finances wisely so that money is not the reason our relationships fail. Even though I'll be sharing five key points with you to help you balance your financial life with your spiritual belief, number four is where I've realized that a lot of people get it wrong. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started. First, let's understand that money is a tool and not a goal. In the Bible, 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all kind of evil. This means that while money itself isn't bad, our attitude towards it can lead us astray. So the point here is using money to serve your needs and help others rather than letting it control you. Next, let's talk about budgeting. Proverbs in chapter 21 verse 5 tells us that the plans of the diligent leads to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Creating a budget helps you plan your spending and saving. And this ensures that your financial decisions align with your values and goals. A budget is actually a reflection of your priorities. So start budgeting. Point three, generosity and giving. One way to know you have a healthy relationship with money is through your generosity. We all know the popular scripture in Luke 6, 38 that says, give and it will be given unto you. By giving to others, whether through tithing, charity, or helping those in need, we acknowledge that our wealth is a blessing meant to be shared. And this not only helps others, but also enriches our own lives. This next point, like I said, is where a lot of people get it wrong. But before I delve into it, please make sure you've liked this video, you've shared it with your family and friends, and you're already subscribed to my channel. Thank you. Point number four, avoiding debt and living within your means. This right here is a big deal for a lot of people. Debt can be a heavy burden. And that is why Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 warns that the borrower is a slave to the lender. I will not talk much about this because you already know what to do. Strive to live within your means and avoid unnecessary debt. This might mean making sacrifices, but it leads to a greater financial freedom and a peace of mind in the long run. Remember, you're not in a competition with anyone. There's nowhere in the world where an award is given to the wealthiest man or the richest man. I have not seen it. I'm sure you haven't either. So be wise. Lastly, trust in God's provision. Matthew 6, 31 to 33 reminds us, So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Trust that God will provide for your needs as you manage your finances faithfully. Truth is, God does show up for everyone financially and he shows up on time. Just make sure you are doing the right thing from point one to point five. Thank you for watching. I hope these points help you build a healthier relationship with money grounded in faith and wisdom. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone else who might find it helpful. You know I'm not going to let you go without sharing the word of God with you. So this week, let's look at the scriptures in the book of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25 to 27. The NIV says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap or store away in bands, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I fell in love with this scripture right from the very first time I came across it, especially the verse 20 says, just thinking how God make provisions for inanimate and non-living things alone assures me that he will make provision for me. I hope you can rest on the word of God and hold on to it and 
God would definitely come true for you. Till I come your way again next week, take care and God bless you.